Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're in Como for a six switchboard upgrades in this unit complex. Today we're just looking to upgrade all the switchboards individually, keep them up to standard, maintain the safety and integrity of all these houses and make sure that everybody is protected and happily using their electrical services. So we're gonna get stuck into it one by one. I think we're all gonna take a switchboard each, make it into a bit of a race. Russ is missing today because he's lazing around over in Bali, but we'll have to give him some shit when he gets back. But apart from that, we're gonna get stuck straight into it. So follow us guys and we'll show you how it's done. <laughs> Alright guys, so I've just taken the time to open up this board and we've already encountered our first issue. All the cabling behind here is just wired in single insulated um, cable, so therefore without going around the whole house and testing every point to find the active and neutral to each other, which is going to be very difficult considering um, there's nobody home in a lot of these units at the moment. Everybody's off at work and whatnot. So without doing that, it's going to be very hard to install these RCBOs because they're just going to start tripping if the neutrals are not the correct ones because you need the neutral and active for the RCBO to be from that same cable, obviously. So Steph's just having a chat with the client. We're gonna look to install RCD circuit breakers as individuals. Therefore, we can group a couple of circuits together on the same RCD and we can avoid the problem of it tripping and therefore it's still also protected. So hopefully that's the same situation. I've just had a chat with Riley and Geordie and they've had the same situation along all the other units as well. So the RCD and circuit breakers as a combo are gonna, gonna be like probably the best solution for this problem. So once Steph has finished talking to the client, we'll hopefully sort that out. Might have to make a trip to the wholesaler and get cracking right back into it. Yeah, so I'm just taking this one here off. Just wanna see if it's has the same problem as the other ones. Yeah, so we've just pulled this one off. It's a bit better because you can see some of the TPS cable, but we've still got some going up into conduits into the house from when it was originally built. But we should be able to work with this one at least. That's at least one good one out of the six. So this one here, you can see the actual cable. So therefore we can match up what the active and the neutral is for that cable and that circuit. And because you need the same active and neutral for the RCBO to function correctly. So without, on all the others, we can see the actives that go into the old um, circuit breakers, but the neutral just goes straight to the bar, so we can't match up what goes to what, and therefore makes it very hard to obviously install the RCBOs and make sure that they're functioning, functioning correctly and safely for people. Pretend you f***ed up. Hello? 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 Hey, Ross? Hi, hey, mate. We're waiting for you here in, uh, in Como. Oh, in Como? Sorry, mate. I'm running a bit late. Have, have you been drinking, Ross? No. You sound a bit intoxicated. No, no I just woke up. I just had two sips of coffee. Yeah, especially martinis for breakfast. <laughs> Long Island iced teas, mate. Mate, you have four jobs under your name, mate. Where are you? There's six switchboard upgrades for you. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll do one here. I had to do a little bit of switchboard upgrade here. The power was off the other day. <laughs> in Bali. <laughs> All right, so you may be wondering why this one looks so much newer and we're still upgrading it. As you can see here, they do have their uh, two RCDs here and here to protect both their power and light. That's a minimum in Australia. But all these circuits at the end, including the aircon, oven, hot water system and so on are not protected by any RCD 
and therefore if there any fault was to occur they're just on the circuit breaker so that's only going to function if it's a harm to the device itself rather than to a person so you're not going to be protected if that device if that hot water system becomes live and you touch it it's still going to continue to stay on even when you're touching it and you're going to be electrocuted so that's why we're just going to remove all these ones make sure they're all on the rcbo all safe and secure so even though it meets the minimum requirement it's not completely up to being the safest possible it can be so here we're just making sure that they're all universal everybody's got the same everybody's up to standard and everybody's safe got no idea what's going on <laughs> yeah just uh watching what riley's doing where uh <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's it. Watch and learn, mate. Even when you feel low, you can still go. This is the nightmare for most of the electricians. They used to wire up the house with um, building wire, they're called. When they're individual cores, and they just run the cable inside the conduit. So back in the old days, they used to wire up the house with building wires, which are individual core cables and we wish the, you know, the regulation were different and back then, but they weren't. And the way they did, they, did, they just run a bunch of cable within a conduit, and they didn't really label this cable where they were going. It was a power circuit, light circuit, aircon circuit. So when it comes to rewire and make everything up to standards, it makes the job really, really difficult because we don't know where the, this wiring are going. Nowadays, we were different cables which we use different cables which they are called TPS and the TPS um, the beauty about the TPS is that it's actually enclosed within the circuit so even though you don't label them by looking at the cable the, the size and because they are paired together you know exactly that that's a circuit already you may don't know which circuit it is but it's really easy to test if you have the pair within the active and neutral. So at least you can have the connection right and then to find the actual circuit, you can just walk backwards in the, in the house and switch the breaker on and see which actual circuit is on. This would be so much easier if Ross was here. <laughs> Still slowly making my way through the board, just making sure I label everything correctly. Nothing's mislabeled because then once I fit off and think I'm finally done, it could cause a lot of problems when I go to um, test and obviously turn it on. So just making sure everything's matching up. So far so good. I've only got a couple more circuits to go. Then we'll get this old board out and um, yeah, get the new DIN kit that will sit into the, into, the, into the board. Pop that in there and then start fitting off. I just, um, so first start with the active, remove the active and then um, I try to tra trace it back to which cable it's coming from here. So a lot of this, compared to the building wire that Steph was talking about before, this is mostly in TPS. So therefore, the active and neutral come from that one cable. So if I'm able to trace it back, I'm able to easily find, trace the active, find the cable that's coming from, and then from there, find the neutral, tape them together, label them, make sure I know what they are and what kind of size breaker they need to go into. And then, um, yeah, so it's just a lot of untangling, getting, trying to get rid of the mess behind there and um, yeah, finding out what's what. It's very important when it comes to this sort of stuff. We're getting there, Mr. <laughs> Giordano. See you, mate. <laughs> See you in the light. <laughs> Got my little um, M12 Milwaukee Impact. <laughs> Perfect for switchboards like this because it's a really good. Um, it's got really good torque settings for just screwing into the um, circuit breakers and RCBOs. So when you're hooking up cables, really nice and easy. Just quick, couple taps of the trigger and bang cables in nice and secure. So it's perfect for stuff like this, more um, in intricate stuff. So it's perfect for this right now. Milwaukee, the best. So 
So here I've got the new DIN kit. So this is gonna sit within this gap here. I'm just gonna have to, just putting it in to see how well it fits. I'm just gonna have to shave it down a little bit at the bottom, but that's gonna go in there and then um, all your RCBOs and main switch and everything are gonna clip onto this rail, these two rails. And then I've got my neutral and earth bars at the bottom. It's a much sleeker look. It definitely looks way better than the old um, surface mount enclosure that we got rid of. And it just gives a nice sleek, better, more modern and simple look than the old way of doing it. So this here is the old one. So we use this in times where there's not much space behind the switchboard, because obviously this one has to sit into this recess here. Um, if there's not that much space, it makes it very difficult to fit off. So sometimes we just keep the old black scutcheon board there and place these guys on top. And then um, from there, you can just fit off into here. Works the exact same way. There's no difference functionality wise. Just ideally, when it comes to it, we try to use the DIN kit because it does just look a little bit better and a bit more professional, but it's not always possible. So that's why we got these guys as well. Just as you saw before, guys, it didn't fit perfectly. So I'm um, just gonna have to shave just a little bit off the bottom here with the grinder, just so it gets a nice snug fit. And then I'm able to screw it back nice and easy and it fits perfectly. Kidding. All right, so here I have my um, 10 amp RCBO for my light circuit. So these are the circuit breaker RCD combos. So they feature both an RCD and obviously the functions of a circuit breaker. Um, which means that every individual circuit in this house is going to be RCD protected on its own. So if every, anything down the line starts to trip or their fault occurs, it's simple to identify the circuit that the faults are occurring on. You can test that circuit. Um, you're not losing power to half your house per se because in the olden days when they use an RCD and then circuit breaker separately, if that RCD is tripping because of one of those circuit breakers and you had three to four circuits, say on that circuit, on that RCD, all of those circuits would be completely dead because of that one trip. So now if this house ever has water damage or something start, begins to trip, they can easily identify the circuit. They're not gonna lose power to their whole house. And until an electrician comes out and takes a look, it's, they're not without power too much. So that's why they're way more functional and is much easier to install for us and preferred across the industry. All right, I already finished one, so we are five to go. First one to finish, eh? That's it. <laughs> and I wasn't even trying hard. All right, so we got the first one ready to go. We're not still ready to test it because we need to switch on the power for the whole complex to in, in order to test the switchboard, but is it really looking much better with the cover? It, it will look like that once we put all the pore fillers. It's a really looking million dollar switchboard, isn't it? So just connecting in the circuits now to the RCBOs. And um, yeah, a bit tight with all these cables everywhere. Make it work. So yeah, just hooking those in and then um, I'll start doing the loops off my main switch. And then um, finish off my neutrals and my earths, and then we'll get it uh, powered up. Nothing, I've got nothing over there. I've got a 10 amp. Why the f we did the, the math and there's no fucking breaker left? Yeah, because nobody asked me. <laughs> We're missing the breakers. I asked to count the breakers, but we didn't count it properly. <laughs> my nag jump. Yeah, I came here a couple of weeks ago to count all the breakers. Unfortunately, there was one switchboard that was closed, and I think there were more than we anticipated. So now we are short of <laughs> RCBO. When we're, when we're doing a switchboard upgrade, it's always an um, interesting time when you go to turn it on, obviously, because um, if any circuits have, like, um, say, a cross-neutral or something, a circuit breaker wouldn't actually pick that up. 
as a fault. So it wouldn't trip until um, well, now that they're under RCBO, it would uh, start causing it to trip. So it may involve us having to fix some couple other things, but generally it works perfectly first time. Salute. So here I'm just um, upgrading the equitential bond to the board itself. We uh, had a look at it and it wasn't large enough. So we've upgraded it to 16 mil, put a lug on the ends. Just gonna drill that into the board. So the frame is earth and then the other end is gonna go in with all our other earths to make sure that the board under a fault condition would also be safe to touch still and they say a fault happens and somebody comes out and they're like, oh, missing power, go to open the board. You don't want them to get electrocuted. So that's the purpose of this. Keeps you safe as all good earth should. And yeah, that's about it. So I'm just gonna pop this in and then I'm gonna be able to power this one up. My name's James. My name is uh, Stefano Bucco. Cause it pays good. Uh, I don't know. That's it. Uh, that's <laughs> probably a thing I can go back in the for 15 years history, but let's keep it short. I don't have to deal with shit like plumbers. Oh my God, that's a good question actually, James. <laughs> Why did I start? <laughs> like, comment and subscribe down below. <laughs> I started my own business because I wanted to build a business that I never, I always dreamed of, which was a, a business where ev everyone working in symbiosis with another and and give that extra service to the, to the clients, which I always wanted to, to give when I, I used to work for a company, but I was never really allowed to do. So I'm, I'm trying to build a, like a, a company culture where we go above and beyond for, a, for, the, for the clients and we are, we are prompt and we are efficient and as well as affordable. So the whole concept for me um, was to create a, a, a dream business. All right guys, that's, uh, that wraps it up for another job with the Brillard team. Today we've taken you through our six switchboard upgrades in this unit complex. Each one's just been finishing off now with Riley and Jordy just finishing off theirs. As you can see, I've got mine completely installed and stick it up, labelled and ready to go. And we're just about to head inside to test everything. As you can see, the DIN kit looks nice, looks real clean, simple compared to what was previously there. I hope you've enjoyed watching as we've taken you through the fun time of switchboard upgrades. So I'll get you guys to like, comment and subscribe down below. It's been James, Jordy, Steph and Riley. Until next time guys, catch ya. Just trying to get it as neat as possible. Make Steph happy, want to impress him, you know. When you impress your boss, it's always good. You get some bonuses or whatever.